Mike Pryor was a two-sport star growing up a Bears fan in Chicago Heights, Illinois. He went to the only school that offered him a football scholarship while also allowing him to play baseball. That school was Illinois State. Were you a better pro baseball prospect than football? Because you were drafted like by three different major league teams, if I'm not mistaken, right? Correct. Uh, after my junior year, I got in college, got drafted by Baltimore, and then after my senior year, got the Dodgers in the fourth round. And then when I went and played football, I didn't even know they had a winter draft. If you don't sign with the team, then Houston picked me up in a winter draft. So I could have went and played uh, some minor league ball during the off season after my first year of football, but I chose just to concentrate on football. And if I would have known what would have happened to me in my second year with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they decided, you know, play three preseason games and then they cut me. It was like, yeah, maybe I should have played you know, baseball during the summertime and give me some hope. But then, you know, 87 came, went to the Colts and they cut me and, and then the strike happened. And I came back as a replacement player and played in uh, the three replacement games. And then after the strike broke, they kept five guys on the roster <clears throat> from the strike team. And I was one of five guys and they kept me starting in nickel downs. And a month later, the free safety got hurt and they put me in and then I never left the field for 12 more years. Wow. So it, it worked out. Just curious, what position in baseball? I was center fielder. Center fielder, okay, with that speed. Yeah, yeah bat, batted, batted third and fourth in my years at Illinois State and still, still have the all-time batting average there. You know, they say timing's everything in the NFL, and Pryor joined the Packers at just the right time. It was 1993, the second year of the Ron Wolf, Mike Holmgren era in Green Bay. Well, free agency started <clears throat> in 93, and, uh, you know, I had some good years with the Colts and uh, just felt, you know, maybe there needs to be a change or, you know, to have some leverage to finally, you know, maybe to get what I deserve. And, and the Packers came in early and, you know, homegrown called me, brought me out here. You know, I, I kind of liked it. Dick Duran was our, our DB coach, and, and I really enjoyed it. And, you know, they gave me the best deal to come out here. And uh, I, di I didn't mind it at the time. It, it was fun. It, it was kind of, you know, a little nerve-wracking thing. Okay, it's changing up. Okay, you're going to learn a different defense and see what's going on. But uh, it, it, it was kind of a good change for me. And it, it, it turned out to be I did a lot of different things here in Green Bay than I did in Indy. Instead of just playing half field and uh, deep middle, here I ended up playing a lot of, you know, nickel back, dime back. I got to play, you know, uh, safeties. I did, I did more, I, I got back into playing all the special teams, returning punts, and which by the time after you get over 30 returning punts, I kind of, that was kind of nerve wracking. I was like, I don't think I should be doing this anymore, returning punts when, I, when I'm this old. <laughs> when you got here though, uh, did you realize what they were building? Could you see what was happening? Uh, you know, because I imagine Leroy Butler was here and Reggie would come later, but um, you know, Brett probably had just gotten here by the time you got here. Yeah, it was, it was Brett's first year starting. Reg, Reggie just came over there too, so it was good that we, we had a lot of veterans in there. It was good because I played against Reggie before in Indy, and uh, it was interesting just getting to know all the guys and it was like we got some pretty good team camaraderie here and uh you notice right away like uh you know the fans were crazy in training camp you know riding the bikes down to practice for the kids and uh it, it was just a different environment you go out there and everybody knew your name already practiced the first mini camp i came here you know got out of the don hudson center and uh you know, walking in this kid, oh, can we get your autograph? Oh, you went to Illinois State and kind of told your whole bio for wow. you. And I was like, wow, I was in Indy for six years and nobody ever recognized you when you're <laughs> outside somewhere. So that, that, that was very different. Um, Super Bowl season comes along. Um, tell me about that because you guys were kind of, you were a team of quote unquote destiny. I mean, you were one of the favorites going into that season. You couldn't get past the Dallas Cowboys as a team. And, um, and in fact, in that Super Bowl season, lost to Dallas in a field goal game, I believe, on like a Monday night. But nonetheless, you get to the Super Bowl. Um, tell me about that 
March and that team and what it was like? That was a great March, you know, going, going from the year before and start of the season, it was like, you know, we, we need to win home field advantage. We need to get Dallas up here in Lambeau. They're, they're not going to be able to handle the cold. We, we need to get there. And, you know, we, we, we had a great start to the season. I believe we started out 8-1. Uh, and, one. and then we, we uh, like you said, I think, yeah, we went to Dallas and lost and then went to Kansas City and lost. And all of a sudden we're 8-3. And, three. and uh, you know, we had a couple injuries. I think Shamir got nicked up a little bit. and uh, Robert Brooks went down. And we, we were trying to get things figured out. And... Uh, is like I know we talked to Reggie and he was like, hey Mike, we we got we got to get these guys together, you know. And in, in our team meetings, we're always great. It's like everybody's on the same page, and it's like, hey, we we got to make a run for it, you know. We, we just lost two in a row midseason. We we got to run the table here, you know. Each week, we we got to run the table, and uh, we need to get Dallas up here in Lambeau. And then I, I believe we went to St. Louis, and we're playing St. Louis, and we got off to. A, a little rough start, you know, I think, you know, Brett got sacked in the end zone, safety, and things were starting to fall apart. And, uh, you know, we ended up turning around defensively. We started shutting them down and we ended up winning that game. And then we went on a roll. And we went out the rest of the season. We just believed we could do it. And we were getting ready to, you know, play Dallas here. They were gonna come here and, yep. hey, Carolina beat them. And right after Carolina beat them, it was like, I think the guys were kind of like, hey, we're going to go to the Super Bowl. We're going to take care of business in Carolina, and we're going to get there. Okay, but it didn't really follow the movie script. The movie script had Dallas coming here to play you guys. <laughs> were you guys maybe a little privately disappointed that the, it wasn't going to be the Cowboys, that it was going to be Carolina, or did it I, matter? It, at that time, it really didn't matter. <laughs> we knew, I think, once, once Dallas lost, we said, we're, we're going to the Super Bowl. But we're not going to forget about Carolina. They're a good opponent. They're going to come here, but it was like, it might have been a little relief saying, hey, it would have been a battle up here, but I think we would have loved to beat Dallas here to go to the Super Bowl. You know, um, did you, as a team, did you guys feel the history you were making in that here was this franchise that had been uh, the pillar, the winningest franchise of the 60s, and for almost 30 years was kind of like the Israelites toiling in the desert trying to get to the promised land. And, and here you guys were on the doorstep. Did, did you have a feel for the history, for what was being written here? Because since that season, since that Super Bowl, the Green Bay Packers have been relevant, whereas for so many years before then, they weren't. I, I, I really didn't think so much about that. It, it was like uh, the years I played in the league when I was in Tampa and Indy, heck, we always had trouble when we come up to Lambeau. Lambeau's always been sold out. You didn't realize that, oh, <clears throat> it's been 30 years since they had a title. But it was uh, the way the crowd always responded. You know, coming here, my first year in 93, you would have never known they had won a Super Bowl in that many years. <laughs> the fans, you know, the fans were great, and it was just fun to give back then to the fans, to get there and to see their faces and then come back after uh, winning the Super Bowl and the parade that was supposed to take maybe 30 minutes, took an hour, two hours and a half to, to get around with all the fans out there and the cold weather and the snow and stuff. So it was a, no, it was a great experience and it was a great way to give back to the fans. Super Bowl Sunday is a special day for everyone, but for Mike Pryor, he wasn't just a spectator. His interception that day helped deliver the Packers' first championship since the Lombardi era. It was, uh, it was kind of almost a fair catch for me. You know, I was back there, uh, you know, we were putting some pressure on a quarterback, so we're on man-free coverage, and I'm in deep middle, and it's like, I'm seeing the ball come up, and I'm like, I can't believe he's going to throw this. It's going to be too easy. And he just, he overthrew him so far, but he had the ball up in the air so much, so it was like, I'm making sure I'm gonna catch this ball. So I kinda, I kinda cradled it instead of going up high and trying to catch it with two hands. So I made the catch, and I knew I was gonna get hit right away, and I actually, you know, I always do stupid things. You know, he got on my back, and I was able to flip him off and get a couple extra yards. But uh, no, it was, it was a good experience. It was, uh, it was a point in the game where, I think we were at, it was about 14 to seven at that time, and got the ball back to Brett before halftime and they went down and scored. So to get that two touchdown lead again was, was great going in at halftime. 
Reggie had a big game with some sacks and that type of thing. And oh, Reggie turned it up. Yeah, he really did, didn't he? That day. He did. Where would you be without Desmond Howard returning the kickoffs? Oh, I know. He, he was awesome. You know, I guess you got to thank Don Beebe for pulling a hamstring. Because <laughs> uh, Desmond was just a punt returner all year, and, and Don was doing the kickoff returns, and, and, and Don got, you know, like hit up a little bit. His hamstring was was bothering him through the playoffs. So we had Desmond in there and uh, Desmond did an unbelievable job in just, you know, getting the ball and, and, and finding the creases to get there. It was just everything, you know, guys stepped up. If somebody went down, somebody else came in and filled the role great. Today, Mike Pryor serves as the Indianapolis Colts Youth Football Commissioner, teaching the game he loves to a new generation of players.